In this video, we're going to talk about another small topic uh, that involves the equilibrium constant. And this one is actually uh, quite straightforward, but also very important and um, is something that you should definitely pay attention to. So one thing we can think about is, you know, we have these reactions and we can always manipulate reactions. We saw this with Hess's law. Um, when we were doing things with Hess's law, we, would, we were able to flip a reaction and that would affect delta H. And we were also able to multiply by a factor and that would affect affect delta H also. So let's look at some of these. Let's look at what would happen as we make some of those changes. So let's say that we have PCL5 uh, is in equilibrium with PCL3 and Cl2. And these are all gases. And so we can write a K for this expression where we have K is equal to the concentration of PCL3 times the concentration of Cl2 divided by the concentration of PCL5. Now let's think about what would happen if we flip this over. So if you flip this, uh, if you flip this reaction around, what's going to happen to the value of K? So let's do that. So if we do PCL3 plus Cl2 is in equilibrium with PCL5, and let's just call this K1. This is K1. So this is our reference K. And so what would we have to do to K1 in order to get it to be uh, to get it to look like this. Well, if we write the K for this, so if we write little K, uh, we'll call this one K2, I guess, where uh, this represents the K for this other example. So in this case, it's PCL5 divided by PCL3 and Cl2. And what you'll notice is that K2 is the inverse of K1. Right, so we flip things over. So when you flip the reaction around, what we have to do for this one is we have to um, is we have to inverse K1. So K2 is going to equal K1 to the minus one. So if you wanted to flip a reaction around, you could get the K for that simply by taking the K for the unflipped one and and inversing it or taking it to the minus one. And that's because we flip these things over themselves. Now let's look at what would happen if we were to do this with a factor. So what if we multiplied this thing by two? So let's say that we do PCL5 uh, is it in equilibrium and we, did, we put a two here with two PCL3 plus two Cl2, and these are all gases again. Forgive me if I'm forgetting my phase labels. So now let's say that this is K3. So if we were to write what K3 is, it would be PCL3 squared uh, times CL2 squared divided by PCL5 squared. And so what you notice is that this is the same thing as K1, except all of the terms are squared. So if we wanted to get a value for K3, we could take K1 and we can square it, and that will give us a value for what this would be if we had multiplied it by two. So whenever you multiply by a factor, you can take the K from the reference expression and raise it to whatever uh, power you're multiplying it by. Now let's do one more example. Let's say that we flip N double. So we take the PCL, we, what we do is we take the PCL3 and we double that, and we take the Cl2 and we double that, and we have that in equilibrium with PCL5, and we double that. So if we write K4 for this, uh, K4 is going to be PCL5 squared over PCL3 squared over Cl2 squared. So how can we get K, uh, the value for K4 from our reference equation, K1? We would have to first account for the flip by putting 1 over K1, and then we would raise that k1 to the second power. So you'd get 1 over k1 squared. The final part of this video, we're going to look at what happens when we combine two equilibrium reactions. So what we have is we have two equilibria here. Uh, one is the uh, reaction of carbon monoxide with hydrogen to make methane and water. And the other one is the reaction of methane with uh, hydrogen sulfide to make uh, hydrogen and carbon sulfide. So in this case, what we can do is we can write equilibrium constants for both of these reactions. So we can write uh, an equilibrium constant for K1, which is going to equal the H2O times the CH4 divided by the um, CO times the H2 cubed. 
And we can write an equilibrium constant for the second one, which will be uh, the carbon sulfide times the H2 to the fourth divided by the CH4 times the H2S squared. So we have K1 and K2. And now the question is, is if we were to combine these two reactions and add them up, what would we get as a combined um, equilibrium constant? And then what could we do with the first two equilibrium constants? If we knew the value for K1 and K2, could we come up with a value for the combined? So let's, let's do that. So if we combine these, the CH4s are going to cancel. Um, the H2s are going to cancel. We're going to be left with just one H2. And I believe that's everything. So what we're going to get is we're going to get CO gas plus 2H2S gas is in equilibrium with CS2 gas plus H2 gas plus H2O gas. And we can write an equilibrium expression for this where we have K3 is equal to the concentration of the CS2 times the concentration of H2 times the concentration of H2O divided by the concentration of CO divided by the concentration of H2S squared. And so now the question is, is can we come up with a relationship with K1 and K2 that will allow us to um, determine the value of K3, and we can. So what you'll notice is that um, if we take K1 and K2 and we multiply them together, these will factor out to give us the exact same expression as K3. So if we do the following, if we take K1 times K2, that's going to equal the concentration of H2O times the concentration of CH4 divided by the concentration of CO times the concentration of H2 cubed times the concentration of CS2 times the concentration of H2 to the fourth times the concentration of CH4 and then uh, we have H2S on the bottom. And so if we multiply these together and we start to cancel things out, This just becomes a 1. What we wind up getting is we wind up getting K3. We get H2O times CS2 times H2 divided by CO times H2S squared. So what we can say is that if we know the values for K1 and K2, if we multiply those values together, we will get the value for the composite equilibrium expression, which is K3.